Hey everyone, and welcome to another Absolute Minimum. This video has been requested a number of times since May, but now that I'm making videos on the regular, I figured I should actually go ahead and do it. So as the title says, in this video I'm going to cover how you can use SpaceMax for Python development. Before we actually set anything up in SpaceMax, I want to talk about your environment for Python development and how to set it up. Now the expectation here is that you're using virtual environments for your Python development on the off chance that you're doing Python development in an environment where you are not using virtual environments, such as robotics development with ROS1, what I'm going to show in this video will still work for you, but if you have the choice, use virtual environments. That's just good sense when working with Python. Also note that if you're using Conda, you might still be able to use SpaceMax for Python development, but you might need to launch it from the terminal after you've already activated the Conda environment. The interface for switching environments that I'm showing here, as far as I know, only works with PyEnvs and not Conda Envs. Now there's at least a couple of different ways to use virtual environments in Python. I use virtual env wrapper. So let's jump into a terminal and install it. This is the only thing that will install in this video in my global environment. Sometimes when you install virtual env wrapper, the commands in it are not available to you in your terminal. A one-time fix for that is to run source virtual env wrapper.sh, and a more permanent fix would be to put that line source virtual env wrapper.sh into your bashrc or zshrc. Now on my computer, Python 2.7 is the default because I'm using Ubuntu 18.04, so the make virtual env script also defaults to it. To make a Python 3 environment, I would do dash dash Python equals Python 3. Note that if you want to make it for a specific version of Python, you can also specify a path to the Python binary. When you create these virtual environments, they're active by default. But if you want to switch between them, you can use the script work on. So work on test env3 switches to the test env3 environment, and then work on test env switches back to test env. This is useful to know because the command in SpaceMax for switching virtual environments also includes work on in its name. Now, whenever you set up a virtual environment for development with SpaceMax, it is useful to have a few additional packages installed. These include Flake 8, which is used for linting and error checking, iSort, which is used for sorting your top-level imports, YIPF, which stands for Yet Another Python Formatter, which is used for auto-formatting of buffers or regions in SpaceMax, and finally, if you choose to use the Python language server, the Python language server. We'll do the same thing in the Python 3 environment. For the purposes of today's demonstration, I'm also going to install an additional package that I can then use to import things from. Note that this package also pulls in NumPy as a dependency. Now we'll go ahead and launch SpaceMax. If we go to the .spacemax file, spacefed, and then go to layers, you should already have a commented out line for Python. Go ahead and uncomment that. Now go ahead and restart Emacs and give it some time to install the new packages. Now, a small idiosyncrasy in the Python layer is that when you're using virtual envs, sometimes things don't quite work well if you go to a Python file and then activate the virtual env. So instead, it is recommended that you first activate the virtual environment that you want to use and then go to a file. I'll link a GitHub issue in the description that has some discussion on this problem. So I'm going to create a new file called test.py and then import the transform class from tinytf and then create a new transform. Now that dot should have opened a completion menu. Sometimes after a cold start, that doesn't quite work and you have to manually call company complete. To do that, just do meta x and then type company dash complete. And now we get a floating menu or a frame that shows all the possible completions, which in this case are all the methods under the transform class. So I can go ahead and pick one. And then as I type the parentheses, notice in the bottom left corner, the mini buffer will show the function signature for this function. And since this is a class method, I can ignore the first argument and then fill in the remaining three. Now with the object created, if I do a dot access into the object itself, I get that function list again. And as I type here, the options available to me decrease until there's only one option left. When there's more than one option, hitting tab will cycle through these options and hitting control J and control K will do the same thing. And you can pick any one of these options by hitting enter. The same is true when you have only one option left, you can either hit enter or hit tab to do that completion. It's easy to jump to the definition of a variable or a class. In this case, if I want to find out where the transform class is defined and maybe read its source code, all I have to do is press comma gg. This takes me to the tf.py file in the tinytf folder, where I can read the definition of the transform class as well as for all of its methods. Note that similar to any other mode in SpaceMax, all I have to do is press space ji to get a listing of all the methods, separated also by which class they're under. You can hit Control o to go back to the last place that you were at. Note that if I make a mistake or a typo in this file, 
for example in this case referring to a variable tt that does not exist, or do something else in the file that might not be agreeable to a linter, these small dots appear, yellow dots for warnings, and red dots for errors. As well as these squiggly lines that show what part of a particular line these dots are referring to. If you take your cursor to one of these areas, you'll get a pop-up describing the situation. In this case, this is not an error, it's just a warning. If we go to the second location, this is definitely an error, and it's referring to the fact that TT is a name that hasn't been defined yet. Obviously, we can fix it by removing the additional T. The dot goes away. Another way to see these errors in a file is by pressing space space and going to flycheck list errors. This opens a small buffer on the bottom showing all the errors, and if you navigate to this buffer, you can go through these errors by pressing J and K. And as you do that, the cursor in the top buffer will go to the line and the location in question. If you hit enter in any one of these, you'll be taken to that location. If you only want to show errors in this window, you can do space space, fly check, filter, and then select error as the filter. And now as you'll notice, the warning has disappeared. The warning display will still show up in your file as a blip. It just won't show up in the fly check errors buffer. Now let's say that somebody hands you code that's written like this. That's not a very nice looking buffer. What you can do is you can yapfify it. So if you do space space and then type yapf, you can see the options yapfify region and yapfify buffer. You can also reach these by hitting comma and then hitting equal. So comma equal is going to apply yapf to the entire file. Depending on what the rules are set up for yapf, one of the issues that we created had been fixed, the other one had not. I put the link to the YAPF repository in the description where you can read more about the formatter and what settings you can set for it. You can also selectively apply formatting to a specific region. So if we had two mistakes like this, and you only wanted to fix one of them, you can go ahead and select that area and call yapfify region. In order to run this script from inside Emacs, you can press comma. After pressing comma, you'll see that C is for the execute menu. If you press C, it shows that we can either press small c or capital C to execute this file. Let's just press small c. The second buffer opens below that shows the run of this script as well as the output, in this case, the output of t.position. It's important to be careful when doing this. If your script produces a lot of output, you can potentially make Emacs unstable. So something to keep in mind. Now, so far we have been using the Anaconda package to do code completions. Another option is to use the language server protocol. To use the language server protocol, First, we have to make sure that the LSP layer is installed. If the LSP is active, the Python layer may or may not default to it as a backend. In this case, it appears that it did select it as a backend by default. So when I try to open the test.py file, because it's not part of a project, it wants me to associate it with some project root. In this case, I can just say, hey, this is in the home directory, assume that's the root, and press I. When the language server starts, you can see that indicated on the lower left. So now if we go ahead and type transform, dot, we get some completions. In general, the LSP tends to be faster in almost all cases. If you would like to force a specific completion backend, you can do so in the .spacemax file by changing the Python layer line so that it looks like this. Anaconda, as I said, is the other backend. As a final point, I had it in my agenda to show very basic use of DAP mode, which is for setting breakpoints and doing debugging of code inside SpaceMax. And it worked fine for me inside a virtual machine, but then on my main computer, I'm having a hell of a time setting it up. So that's not gonna be in this video, but if I figure out how to use DAP mode correctly and continue using it for a while, I'll go back and make a video specifically for DAP mode for more than just Python. So yeah, this covers what I think is the absolute minimum that you need to know in order to start doing Python development in SpaceMax. I hope this video has been useful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you liked the video or learned something new, please leave a like, and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you very much. Bye.